Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about envelopes and where to buy them, how to make them if you don't have the type you need or want, everything like that. I'm gonna jump right in here and start talking about envelopes, but just to preface before we get going, if you have a suggestion on a great envelope or maybe how you make your envelopes or something like that, that I don't cover in this video, please, this is a community sourced information bucket here. So feel free to leave some comments down below telling me all your favorite places for envelopes or anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna be telling you my experience with mailing cards and using envelopes. So it is definitely not the end all and be all. I am an open book, I am ready to learn as well. So here we jump into it. I'm gonna start by going over pre-made envelopes. Now if I can use a pre-made envelope, I'm gonna do it. It's just faster, it's easier from the get-go. So some of my favorite sources for envelopes, I've got two right here, um, different sizes. This is an A7 envelope where it fits a five by seven card. And this is an envelope from Paper Source. All of Paper Source's envelopes, unless otherwise noted on their website or at their stores, have this nice V flap. It's really, really pretty. It's nice and elegant. Lots of space to put your return address if you choose to do that on the back of the envelope. I really love their envelopes. And they come in lots and lots and lots of different colors, as well as uh, some special finishes. So this is one. I think this is the bronze one. I could be wrong, but um, such a pretty envelope very nice quality and they have a lot of different sizes. They definitely have a A7 which is for a 5x7 card and they also have A2 envelopes which is for an A2 card. So um, all of your most common card sizes will be covered by paper source envelopes. Another great source is Simon Says Stamp. They have a bunch of different colorful envelopes uh, and a bunch. They also have 5x7 white envelopes uh, I think they just added those within the last few months. So those are really great too. That's another great source. Um, also, I mean, I don't have any on hand to show you, but Gina K has really great envelopes. Um, there's a, there's lots of different sources. I have bought envelopes from envelopes.com in the past when I'm looking for a specific size that's just off. Um, for example, I was making uh, mini slimline cards and I didn't realize that I had the wrong dimensions. <laughs> which I'm sure maybe that's happened to some of you out there, but I went searching for some pre-made envelopes that would fit the size of mini slim lines, mini slim lines <laughs> that I had made. And I, I think I had like, you know, five to 10 of them. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to find a pre-made envelope that'll work. Turns out it was like a, um, kind of like the size that you would put a check in or money. It was like a bank envelope. It worked out just fine. This is an actual mini slimline envelope. This is from Simon Says Stamp. They've got a uh, slimline and mini slimline in various colors. So there are some different sizes for you to choose from. Uh, this is one of the A2 envelopes from Paper Source. Such a pretty color. I think this might be the mint color. So uh, I've also really loved holographic envelopes. Now these two um, are both from Hobby Lobby. I don't shop at Hobby Lobby often, um, but I ordered these online when I saw that they carried them. So this is a five by seven uh, holographic envelope, and this is an A2 holographic envelope. Um, I have done some holographic envelopes in the past on my YouTube channel, um, and this is one that has kind of a swirly holographic design. This one is from Simon Says Stamp. Um, just a special note, if you do want to send these holographic envelopes in the mail, you're going to have to send them uh, in a little bit of a special way. I've tested it out and I did try uh, sending some five by seven envelopes with just the address written on the front, um, just in a Sharpie. I tried sending them and they did get to their destinations, but it took a long time. I think in one case it took six weeks and it was just a regular US address where I had sent the my friend the same, like another card the same day because I wanted to test. It was like a regular envelope and then a holographic. She got the regular envelope, you know, well within a week, but it took six weeks to get the holographic one. So then I changed my methods. And now 
I take these cello sleeves. This is from Clear Bags. Um, B75 is the size, I guess. But it's basically just a little cello sleeve. And you can, you know, put your um, card in the envelope. You can even uh, decorate the envelope, whatever you want to do, or just keep it as is. But what I do is I then slide it into this plastic sleeve. I'm going to close it up. And then on the outside, on the clear plastic, I just put a regular white label. And I put the, the recipient's address on it, just in very legible writing, nothing special. And I also do the same with my return address on the back or in the top corner. And that ensures that it gets to the destination within a timely manner and without any issue at all. You could also do the same thing with uh, non-holographic envelopes. If you want to protect your envelope design, let's say you paint it all over this envelope, you wanna make sure it arrives intact. You're going to slide it inside the little cello sleeve and then close it up and mail it like that. You're gonna put a label on the front. You're also gonna put your postage stamp on the outside. You don't wanna put your postage stamps on the envelope itself, on the paper, because the post office needs to be able to cancel them out. So all of your postage has to be on the cl plastic sleeve portion. Um, there are some downsides to this. If you're making some mail art and you've painted it and looks beautiful and you've incorporated the postage into the design, unfortunately, you're going to have to, you know, put it inside and cover it up and then put additional postage on the outside of the plastic. So, you know, you could do that. Or what I've done in the past is I just don't put the postage on the paper envelope. I will wait and put it on the plastic on the outside. Another thing to note is that vintage stamps that have like the lick and press adhesive on them, they don't stick well to these clear cello kind of sleeves. So you are limited to only use more current postage stamps that are stickers, basically. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think if I, you know, I haven't done this, but I could totally see myself doing this. If I painted my envelope, it's all beautiful. I want to protect it. I'm really nervous about sending it through the mail. I'll put it in the plastic sleeve with the postage on the envelope and everything all incorporated. I'll close it up and maybe I put special postage on it. I've used a lot of bitches stamps, whatever. I'm then just going to put another piece of paper right in front to cover up those stamps so there's no confusion. And then I'm going to put some uh, more current forever stamps on the plastic on the outside. Maybe just, you know, some American flags or something, something that's not, you know, special or specific, you know, like if it was a Disney stamp or something like that, that would be more special. Instead, I'm just going to use one of the more kind of generic stamps to go on top. And then the post office isn't confused by seeing additional stamps that are on the inside of the plastic or anything like that. And it completely protects the envelope inside. So that's just something that I would try if you run into a situation like that. Okay, so we've covered kind of pre-bought or pre-made bought envelopes. Um, the size of clear plastic sleeve that I used for my A2 cards, um, it's just A2 cello bag pack. I think I ordered this from Simus' stamp, I think. I can't quite remember. I'll have links to all of these down below in the video description, both to where the envelopes are and the clear cello bags. Okay, so let's say you want to create your own envelope. You might come into this scenario if you want to decorate your envelope with watercolor or markers or anything that just a regular paper envelope can't handle. Um, I've used Copic markers on a regular pre-made envelope. Um, I, I did that by taking some white cardstock and putting it inside, and that caught any of the ink that kind of bled through the envelope. So Copics are generally okay. Um, small amounts of paint or even acrylic paint, you could definitely use a regular paper envelope. I find myself most of the time needing a DIY envelope when I'm going to watercolor or if I'm going to be doing something that has a lot of water involved or a lot of wetness. So maybe if I'm doing alcohol inks or something like that, I might want to use some Yupo paper and cut that down and make turn that into an envelope. I've got an envelope 
a video for that as well. Maybe I'll have some of that footage on screen right now so you can see it. But you can definitely use alcohol inks or alcohol markers on Yupo paper to create an envelope. I've done that in the past. Um, but like I said, it's mostly watercolor paper. I've used Bristol paper, and I've also used a watercolor paper and Yupo. I think those are the three main types of blank surfaces that I've used to create a DIY envelope. So there are a lot of different sources online for, uh, or methods even, for creating your own DIY envelope. For some smaller sizes of envelopes, there's even dies that you can use to run through your die cutting machine to create an envelope. My favorite uh, way to create a DIY envelope, because you can use it for all sorts of sizes, is the We Are Memory Keepers 123 Punch Board. This is an older version. It's a dark gray color. The new version is a lighter color and it's uh, got it's just all lighter in general. I like to use this darker version on camera because it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing, but it's the exact same punch board as what is currently for sale. The only difference is the color. Let's get into this. I'm gonna show you how I use the one, two, three punch board for envelopes. Now, you can make bows and boxes with this punch board, but I'm only going to be worried about the envelope today. But if you did want to do a box or a bow, there are instructions for those on the inside of the punch board also. So one of the reasons why I like using the envelope punch board is there are so many different card sizes to choose from. Now you're not gonna look for the finished envelope size on this, on this chart, you're looking for your card size. So if I've created a card that's A2 right here, that's four and a quarter by five and a half, this line right here, right here where it says the paper size, paper size is eight and one quarter, and the punch guide measurement is three and five eighths. Those are the measurements that I will be using for my envelope that will fit an A2 card. So if I have a, an odd size card, let's say I've got a card that is four and three quarters by six. I'm gonna look for, for a card size over here that is the closest measurement without it being smaller. Looks like it's this five by six right here. So in that case, I would make my paper nine inches square. And I would use the punch guide measurements of four and one eighth. The thing that's really great about the punch board is all of the measurements are listed down to an eighth. So if any of you um, have struggles with reading rulers, this is a great guide here because you're not ever going to have to measure anything smaller than an eighth. All right, with that being said, sometimes you just want to have different measurements, right? You just want to have an envelope for a different size, or maybe it's something that's completely not on here. Like the largest size they have is seven by seven. There are some that are a little bit wider in one dimension, but the largest overall card is seven by seven. Let me see if I can find this. They used to have an app for the iPhone where you could put in your card measurements and it would tell you what to use for the board. I believe there's a website that will do that now. So let me find that, I'm gonna show you. So I just Googled envelope punch board calculator and this is a blog that popped up. It does some calculations for you. And this person actually has um, some different things you can select. There's a one layer card, there's a multi-layer card, so it'll make it just a little bit bigger. You can do a box. You can also have board type. So if you have a mini envelope board, you could do that. I'm just using standard since that's what my board is. Um, and let's put in our, um, our measurements. Now I'm gonna switch it over to uh, Imperial. So I'm gonna use inches. And let's just put in something that is beyond that seven by seven. So let's say our card is uh, eight by eight. That's a good one. Or maybe even how about eight by eight and a half. It's a really big card. It's calculated it down here and it shows you how it should be. And it says that the paper size is 12 and five sixteenths and the score line or the guide, the punch guide number would be six and five sixteenths. So you could totally make an envelope that would fit an eight 
by eight and a half inch card. Okay, so let's run through a scenario where you would be making uh, an envelope, let's say for a card that's just slightly bigger than A2, but you don't want to use a, you know, a five by seven envelope for it. Or you want to use watercolor paper or Bristol paper or Yupo or whatever. We're going to go through that particular scenario. Okay, so let's say your card is, um, let's gonna, that's four and a half by five and a half. Let's see if they've got this measurement here. Um, four and a half by seven and a half, four and a half by eight and a half. There really isn't a four and a half by five and a half. There's a four by five and a half. There really isn't anything that's like perfectly sized for what we're doing. So let's go to that calculator online and see what the measurements are. Okay, I've selected that it is a multi-layered card. And uh, so it's probably kind of thick. I put in my measurements and it's come out to eight and five sixteenths with the score line at three and three sixteenths. So let's go ahead and make that envelope. Now for larger envelopes that are beyond nine inches square, you're gonna have to get some really big pads of watercolor paper or bristol paper or whatever. But since this one is smaller than nine inches, I could just use a regular nine by 12 pad of Bristol paper. So I'm gonna take off one sheet and then I'm going to cut it down to that eight and five sixteenths. All right, when I come to my punch board after I've cut my paper, I'm first going to pull out this arm and if you have a regular envelope punch board, you will not have an arm like this, which is why I always recommend doing the one, two, three punch board because it allows you to do larger envelopes. I'm gonna take out my bone folder as well. I just use the bone folder that comes with the board whenever I make an envelope. And the measurement we're going for, which is up here at our punch guide, that one should be three and 13 sixteenths such an odd measurement, but I'm gonna figure this out. So um, when you're looking at a ruler, see how it's all broken up, coming out this direction, where, let me see if I can, most of you are like, I know how to use a ruler, but if you don't, hopefully this will help. So here's at the half, and then you, this, this space right here in between those, if you split that in half, you have a quarter, right? Actually, let's do it from here. It's a little easier to see. So so from the inch mark to the half, half of that is, a, is one quarter. Then if you go from that area in between, half of that is, it would be an eighth, or it's broken down into eighths. So if I'm going for a sixteenth, that means it's going to be whatever little mark is right in between that right there. And, and I want it to be 13 sixteenths. So three, and then this would be four. So I need to count down or count up to 13 of those little tiny itty bitty marks. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's right between the 3 quarters and 7 eighths, if that makes sense. So I'm going to remember that it needs to go right there. I'm going to look, over, look overhead. Sorry if I blocked the view. And I'm going to punch. Without moving anything, I'm going to slide this up here. I need to use the envelope score line A. So it's the lower score line and I'm just going to use my bone folder and kind of feel for where that's going and then just follow that up and into the punch. All right, so now I've got this nice score line, nice groove right there. I'm gonna rotate it to the left, so counterclockwise. And I'm gonna take this score line and I want to line it up right here. They've marked it as envelope score groove. So I'm gonna feel for where the score line right here, where it kind of falls into that groove. You can also kind of just see where that score line is and have it line up with this 
little notch that's hanging out right here. Let me tip this up so you can see. There's a little notch right there. You just want that score line to come in close to that and then you should be able to wiggle your paper and uh, feel for where that needs to go. So I'm gonna wiggle that in and then as soon as I have it in the right spot, I'm gonna punch and then use that envelope score line A once again. Now I'm gonna rotate it and when I come to line it up with that score line on the groove again, it should, since this is our second rotation, line right up or pretty close to where we, the same measurement across the top where we started. But it, to make it simple, simple for you, just don't worry about that. Just line up where that groove is, kind of wiggle it, feel for where it should be, and then punch. Do that score line again. And then I'm gonna rotate for our last one feeling for where that kind of falls right into the groove and then punch. And then I'll do my last score line. I'll do my last score line right here. And then we have our envelope. This is the main envelope. If you want to round the corners, you absolutely can. Let's go ahead and do that. On this punch board, you've got a couple options. There's a corner rounder over here, and then over here it actually cuts out a little slit out of the corner, but we're just, we just want it to be rounded. So just put that right in there, and it rounds the corner. And then you can rotate your cardstock all around, and you have all of the score lines as well as the corners punched. So here's my main envelope. All you have to do is adhere it together. We'll get to that in a minute for putting the envelope together. But for now, let's make one more envelope, uh, maybe at a more standard size, and I'll walk you through it one more time just in case you're wondering. So for my second envelope, I'm going to be using pattern paper. This is actually another reason why, why you might want to make a DIY envelope. I didn't even think about that earlier, but maybe you want to use some pattern paper. So I'm gonna use Craft Consortium's Ink Drops Dusk 12 by 12 pad. Oh my word, these patterns are beautiful. Let me zoom out so you can see them. They're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this. This blue shade is just, I can't even, I, mean, I keep saying gorgeous, but I don't have any other descriptor for it. So I'm going to just pick one of these to make my envelope. I love this one. It's really, really pretty. But actually... I'm loving almost this periwinkle shape. Let's do that one. A slightly more common size, but we want it to be kind of bigger so we can see what we're doing. So maybe let's do, hmm, we will do a five by seven card. How about that? So five by seven is one of the measurements where your paper will have to be larger than the eight and a half width that is accommodated by a letter size piece of cardstock. So if you want to make an envelope for a five by seven card, you're going to need something larger than your regular cardstock size. So this pattern paper being 12 by 12 is gonna work perfectly for this. I'm gonna cut my paper down to nine and seven eighths. According to the guide on the inside of the punch board, when I'm making an envelope this size, I need to use the measurement up here to four and one eighth. So I'll line up the corner with four and one eighth, punch, and then use the lower score line and just follow that up and into the punch. I'm not going to rotate it and I'm gonna bring that over and kind of line, let it fall into that groove. Punch again and then do the lower score line. I'm gonna rotate it again, find it in that groove and it should be the same measurement as before, and it is, four and one eighth, punch, and bring that in, score, and then this last one right here, 
don't fall into that groove. Punch and then use the score guide right there. All right, so I've got all four sides. I'm not going to round the corners on this envelope. And let's actually assemble the envelopes now. Generally, when I make DIY envelopes, I will not completely assemble or the envelope until I'm done with whatever I'm gonna be decorating it with. So this is Bristol paper, so I might wanna watercolor it, something like that. So I would work with it flat first and then fold it up once I'm done. But sometimes you like to see the actual space that you're working with when you're decorating envelope. So in that case, go ahead and just adhere everything together. I like to use a really strong adhesive when I'm putting the envelopes together. Um, Redline tape is a great go-to for that. You could also use score tape or even some of the, um, the different tapes on a roll like this from like Lawn Fun or Simon Says Stamp, a bunch of different places. If it's meant to be used on like interactive cards or um, anything where you need a really, really strong tape adhesive, it will work great for envelopes. I'm gonna fold up the sides on this envelope first. Then I'll get that bottom flap and also the top. And at this point you can decide how you want your envelope to close. Do you want that to be the top flap or do you want the top flap to be like this? I think I like this one right here. I think that looks really pretty. So something that you can do or take note of it's when you adhere your envelope, notice how this bottom flap, the corner of the bottom flap, comes up beyond the side flaps. So when you adhere this together, you wanna make sure that your adhesive doesn't go um, all the way to the top corner of this flap, or the, I should say the bottom, you know, when it's open, it'll be the bottom. So something that you might want to do, which might help, um, I mostly just eyeball this now, but you could also take a pencil and just make a little mark right there and right there. Just make a little tiny mark and then you can kind of turn it over and kind of mark from the back. So now when I'm over here, I can see where those little tick marks are and I know not to take the adhesive past that point. I'm going to use some eighth inch uh, red line tape from Simus' Stamp. And I'm gonna bring that right below where that pencil tick mark is. And I'm also not going to take it all the way to the corner. That's because uh, when your recipient gets the envelope, they're going to need some way to get inside the envelope. So keeping the corners free from adhesive makes it much easier to open the envelope. I like to get the adhesive as close as I can to the edge. And that's one of the reasons why I don't just put adhesive down here, because if you notice when this comes up, it would keep all of this area free of adhesive, and then it might catch on things when it goes through the post. So I'm going to press that down really well, peel up the red backing tape, and then I can fold my flap up and my envelope is essentially made. Some people choose to cut that area right there so it's flat. I don't tend to worry about that because this is going to be adhered so securely that your recipient probably isn't ever going to see this area at all. They'll most likely cut the envelope at this top fold and then they can just slide their, their card in and out that way. So when it comes to the upper flap, you're gonna go all the way to that V-shaped corner. Once again, I'm gonna start the adhesive a little bit away. I don't wanna go all the way to that corner because I wanna give them an opportunity to open the envelope. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now for the upper flap, since I don't have my card ready to go inside the envelope right now, I'm going to just leave this tape here and then it's ready to go once I have my card inside. So this, is, this envelope is essentially ready to go.
Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I also like to go over all of the folds with a bone folder. That just gets everything nice and flat. It also helps it stay closed a little bit more easily. Now for this envelope, it has a much heavier weight cardstock, but because I've scored it, it should fold really well. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna fold this up and just kind of take note of how far away from that edge or from the corner I need to be. I'm gonna come to this other side, make a little tick mark. Most of the time, like I said, I mostly just eyeball it. So, you know, and it doesn't have to be exactly right there. Like I might come in about right there. It's, for, it's you know, not close to where the pencil mark is. But if you've made enough of these envelopes, you'll get a feel for how far in you can take your adhesive. All right, so I'll press this down and then peel up that red release paper and then fold in the side flaps and fold up the bottom. Now this one, the pencil is uh, very obvious. So I'm gonna take an eraser and just erase those little pencil lines. In order to fully have this envelope prepped, I'm going to go ahead and put that adhesive going all the way to the corner making sure I get down into that rounded corner. And then we've got our adhesive right there, ready to go for this envelope. So here we are, we've discussed a whole lot of envelopes today. If you have any questions about specific envelopes that I've shown or any different methods on how to make your own DIY envelope, please leave that down below in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. Um, if you have any suggestions for everyone, like I said at the beginning of the video, please share. I would love to hear uh, how you make an envelope and what you do with your envelopes. Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more about determining uh, how much postage you need on your envelopes and for your cards. So stay tuned for that. I'll be back very soon uh, in another card video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.